everyone, it's Stephanie here with a video from My Favorite Things. In today's video, we are going to be recreating a fun trifold fairy tale card that design team member Melania created using the new January 2017 release. So to start off, I have two separate pieces of white cardstock, and they are both five and a half inches tall. And I'm just going to go ahead and do some score lines to create my card. Now, I am scoring this in the completely wrong spot, and I realize it way later when I'm putting the card together. So I was going to completely redo this whole video and redo the card, but I thought I would leave it just to kind of show you that sometimes you just kind of mess up and do it a little bit wrong, but it still kind of works out in the end. So I decided to leave it alone, and I'm going to show you what I ended up with versus what I should have ended up with. So I am creating a three and a quarter inch panel for each panel. So I'm scoring at three and a quarter inches on the first piece there. And then I'm also scoring a second little piece here. This is three and a quarter inches wide. And then I have a half inch little piece there on the side that I'm scoring down. And the reason I'm doing this is because to create the trifold card, our cardstock piece isn't big enough. So I need to add two pieces of cardstock together in order to create the entire trifold. Now, ironically, the card would have fit on one cardstock piece with the measurements that I use. So I didn't even clue in when I was creating the card that I had the complete wrong measurements for each of the panels. So even though this technically would have worked with one sheet of cardstock, I'm glad that I didn't realize it because you're actually seeing how you need to create the card if the card is measured at the right measurements. So hopefully that makes sense. My panels are three and a quarter inches and they should have been four and a quarter inches. So we're just going to go ahead and continue to assemble the card. So I have both of my pieces here. All of the panels are three and a quarter inches and I'm just adding them together here with that little tiny piece that I added with the adhesive. And I'm just lining this up and then I'm going to press down really well to make sure that these two pieces are fully adhered. And that is going to leave us with a trifold card that we're going to be able to decorate each of the panels on. I love cards like this because you can create one continuous scene right across the entire card and when you close it, it, you don't realize that you have this great scene until you completely open it and then you have all of this stuff going on on this card and it's just a really fun way to add a whole bunch of elements onto one card design. So I'm going to start now by doing some inking onto the actual card. So I have some blue ink here and an ink blending tool. And I'm just kind of using a scrap piece of paper to the side there and I'm dabbing off the ink so that I don't have a lot of it on the ink blending tool. Especially because I prefer to start to ink off of the paper so that you don't end up with big splotch marks on your card. But because we're kind of going straight across this huge card here, I am starting in the middle area so I want to make sure I don't have a whole lot of ink on that blending tool. So by dabbing it onto the paper to the side there, it just really helps to kind of take some of that ink off so that you don't end up with more ink than you want. To give the ink background a little bit of a textured look, I am going to add some water on there. So I just spritz water all over each part of that card base. And then I'm using my paper towel and I'm just folding it directly over the card. And I'm using it to kind of soak up any of the excess water that's sitting on the ink. And with Distress Inks, what that does is it kind of lifts off the color and you're left with some white splotch areas. So it's just a fun way to add a little bit more detail to your inking. Now I have a separate piece of white cardstock here and we're going to use this to create the grass pieces that we're going to use in the scene. So I just have some green distress ink and I'm using an ink blending tool to add this to this background area. And I'm really adding a ton of color. I want it to be nice and green. And then I'm repeating the same process that I did with the sky on the card base and I'm just using water and a paper towel to add some water to the background and then kind of lift it off for that distress look that we created earlier. And then once I have that done and the little panel is dry, I'm going to use the Grassy Hills Dynamics dies and I'm going to cut three separate pieces for grass. I made sure that when I cut them out and die cut them that I kept them all roughly the same width so that when I put them onto the card base they'll all line up and look like one continuous row of grass when the card is fully opened. So you can see there I'm laying them on top, they're going to fit perfectly and they're going to work great for this scene. So once I have the grass done, I'm going to start to assemble the card. So now you can see here I have a whole lot of stuff going on here. I have used the Night and Shining Armor and the Once Upon a Time stamp sets. These are both new for January 2017. And I've also used the new Castle Dynamics, which is super fun. It has everything you need in this die set to create fun castles. And I've stamped and die cut and colored all of the pieces so that I have everything ready so that we can just kind of put the card together. 
So with the stamping and the coloring, I stayed very light with my colors. You can see all of the different stamp components are very light and kind of pastel-y looking. And I'm really liking that look. I don't tend to do that. I tend to be more dark. I like to really saturate my images with color. But I went with what Melanie had done on her card, and I have to admit I really enjoyed the very minimal coloring that I did on these images. I just think it's a completely different look than what I'm used to. So just don't feel like you have to color for hours to get some really cute images. The light coloring that I did on these images ended up being perfect and really added to this whole scene. So I just think it really worked out. So now this is the point in the card when I realized that my panels were the wrong size because when I went to put all of my images on, things were not fitting how they were supposed to. As you can see, when I put the carriage on, the horse that's supposed to be in front of the carriage, I had to overlap him over top of the carriage because if I would have put him in the right spot, he would have completely went into the other panel. So I kind of stopped and looked at everything and realized that my panels that were supposed to be four and a quarter inches were actually three and a quarter inches. So you definitely want to use the four and a quarter measurement so you have enough room to place everything but I decided to keep going and just kind of see what would happen and try and put all of the images onto the card and it actually worked out fine. Um, the horse looks a little bit silly kind of <laughs> with the overlapping that I had to do there with the carriage but I think for the most part it worked and like I said I decided to keep it just to show that sometimes you make an oopsie and you kind of mess something up but you can always salvage a card if you just kind of change the direction of how you were going to do things. So I just kept going here. I'm using some foam adhesive for the very front of the card and I had to kind of position my princess a little bit different so that she would fit on the panel with the prints. And I, you only want to use foam adhesive on the front of the card because everything else is going to be in that trifold and it's going to fold together. So you just want to make sure you use regular adhesive for the middle and the last panel. But feel free to use the foam adhesive on the front for a little bit of dimension. And I'm just going through and adding all these little pieces. So I have the sun there. That's a separate die that's um, been out for a while from my favorite things. I added that to the center panel with some clouds. I added all of my little castle pieces, which I've already die cut and added color to. And then I'm just adding my prince and my princess to the final scene here. And then all of the tiny little birds and the butterflies that are all around the scene to kind of fill in and really add to the fun look of this fairy tale scene. So that is going to complete the card. Like I mentioned, it's a little bit incorrect for sizing, um, but it does work out. I did have to modify my sentiment. I only used one sentiment on the very front, and I had to use the smallest sentiment in the set so that I could fit it in the area that I had. And then once I have that done, I'm just going to use my bone folder and just kind of refold everything and really press down on those edges just because we've added a lot to the card. And then I'm left with this great trifold card that's a little bit skinnier than we were supposed to have, but still works out in the end. So thanks so much to Melania for this beautiful design for us to recreate, and thank you so much for watching today's video. If you would like to check out a couple more videos, you can go ahead and click those on the screen, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.